Hey guys, just goofing around in the garage. Got a um, got a week off after Easter on holidays, so I've just been putting in some new scales on a uh, on an old knife and reshaping the handle on another. And was just reading the post up about some um, natural tinders for fire starting with your fire steel. So there's two that I mentioned that I've got: um, the fatwood and also some paper barks. So I've got a couple of paper barks just down here. We've just had a shower actually. Um, so they again might be a little bit more challenging because they'll be a little bit wet and we've also got the fat wood that I've been selling so we'll go through and we'll have a bit of a look at that um, and here's all the fire steels that I've been chucking handles on and I'll, um, I'll just use one of those and, um, and see if I've got an old one lying around so these are mish metal um, as opposed to ferrocium um, although different types, I guess the mish metal ones throw throw a, a longer lasting spark. They wear out a little bit quicker, but um, but with the amount of uh, the amount of fires that you that you get out of each one, even with even with the quicker wearing ones, is, is still a huge amount. Um, all right, so bear with me. I'll grab some of this spark, and we'll be back into it. All right, so we've got some. Um, some paper bark. Uh, it's a little bit damp on one side, but on the inside, it's all pretty good. So we'll use that. And um, fat wood. We've got a few bags here already made up, ready to go. Oh, we've got some bits that are. So I guess the the fat wood that you're looking at, if you're doing a bit of fat wood. So this is a bit of a pine stump that's got some fat wood in it. You can see these rings running through here. That's going to be high of resin. All of the stuff in between, not so much. So when you get a smaller piece like this, um, we'll just make sure you can see. You might be able to. Um, you can see, here we go, here's a bit on. You can see this vein of resin running through there. I'll just clamp it up. So yeah, so you can see that vein of resin through there, and that's what you want. I mean, like this, the pine's still going to light, and we'll try and we'll give a go of just some of that pine. But definitely, when it's got some resin in there, um, you're going to know it because it just it literally bursts into flame. All right, so there's our two victims. We've got pine fatwood. Um, this one here, look, look at that. That's like really resinous. See all that through there? You can almost see. I don't know if you can see in the colours, but. It's real gummy. That's the good gear. Um, righto, fire steels. I've just been throwing a few. I've pulled these old ones out that I made yonks ago. As you can see, they've started to oxidise a little bit. Um, and because they, these were actually seconds, I bought off a, a fellow um, forum member. And um, and look, they, they still work great, but it appears they're all mish metal because look how long the sparks. Well, they all, from my experience, a uh, standard ferro rod won't have the longevity of those sparks. Right, so anyway, well, I'm just using the back of my blade rather than a, a, a striker type thing. Um, this is just a little blade I made out of a, uh, a paint scraper. Here's another one that's on the way. Um, anyhow, so let's have a look at this. So we've got the, just using the back of the blade again, I'm just scraping down to get some fine stuff. Give it a shot, yeah. And away you go. So if we've got, let's let's do it properly and pretend we're trying to start a fire rather than just showing that it can create a flame. So I'll have all this other stuff ready. Nice small little bits. Your twigs go on then, you can have more to keep going. 
so it's not going to create a really long lasting flame on itself but it should be enough at least to get your, um, your pencil lead size stuff up and running well there you go so you can build quite a Cool, so that's how that works. So we'll put that out. Alright, pine fat wood. So here's the same bit that we were talking about before. Yep. So I'm going to a bit of it and a bit of the wood that doesn't have so much resin in it. Using the back of my blade. scraping it up to get filings. Now, you can make your shavings and if it's really thick with resin, you probably get a spark in that. Um, but I've just been scraping the resin up. And you see how it forms that tight little stuff there. That's the stuff you're after. So I'm going to just open that up a little bit, we'll get these shavings out of the way. We'll get a couple of nice little thin pieces to add to it once we get it going. Alright. So I've, as you can, you can see the amount of material that I've removed from there, not a hell of a lot, and you can really see that pine in there. So what we're using isn't the isn't the piniest part of that piece, that twig that we've got there. All right, so this is the same rod that I used before, I think. All right. And away you go, and you can see the black smoke. That's the resin that's in there. And you see that that wasn't a an incredibly piney bit. If we get this pine bit here and just hold it above it, you'll see. It smells really strong. That's a big bit of wood to put on I guess. Might be a little bit unfair on it. But you can see let's get this going. You can see can you see? You can see all of that popping and fizzing going on. Now that's all the resin in there just kind of exploding and popping out and that sort of stuff. So that's where you go. Some good good ingredients there, the um the paper mark, some fat wood, and Nice fire steels. These are my favourites at the moment. This is the ringed ginji, I think it's called. That's nice. Flame to McKay, cedar, um, brown melly burl. Righto, that's all I got.